So this is Spotify's card thing. And in case you're not entirely sure what this is, it's basically a Spotify media player. So this connects to your Spotify account and it plays music with your Spotify account. So one thing you should know though, is that you have to have a premium account for you to be actually connect your account to the Spotify card thing. So basically you just use it to control your music. It plays music for you without having to physically go into your phone and play music for yourself. As soon as this connects to your phone, it'll automatically connect to your Spotify account and automatically either start playing music or allow you to quickly start to control your music right away, which is pretty cool. So where you would use this would be primarily in the car. That's why it's called car things that you can connect to your car. Uh, it's mainly focused towards people who don't have like a, I don't know, like a smart car who don't have a screen that already connects via like either Android car, what I think it's what it's called, Android Auto, or um, the Apple Apple CarPlay, some of that. Um, so if you don't have that, this would be something you might consider. Um, that's why I got it. I have a Nissan Altima 2007, so it does not have anything tech smart with it. So I already have a Bluetooth transmitter, I have a dash cam set up, now I have this. <laughs> so basically that's what it is and what it's uh, tailored for. Um, you can also use this at home. So like I can easily connect to my music right now, because again, this is connected via my phone, so as soon as it's turned on, it'll automatically connect to my phone with my account and I can start playing music on my phone right away. So if you want to have something cool, like you can have this set up on your monitor or something like that, you can e easily have that ready and set to go if you listen to music a lot at home. So starting out with the hardware design here, it's a very sleek and slim looking device. It's black, it's matte black, I really like it. You got an LCD display here. It's not that high resolution, but again, you don't really need a high resolution display for that. It's refresh rate, by like 30 FPS. Um, but it's pretty good. It's a pretty slim and sleek looking thing. Um, you got a dial here that controls your music. It also controls um, playlists when you're browsing around. So you can use it to browse around and search around. Um, the dial also has a button within it. So you can use the press um, to play and pause music or select the song that's highlighted and so on and so forth. You also have a little button below the dial, which is almost like a recent slash back button. So you just press it to go back and forth between the menus and the now playing uh, menu. Um, you also have little preset buttons on the very top, so you have four of them, so you can easily preset a playlist, an album, to e quickly get to that um, playlist or album right away, which is pretty cool. Um, this device also has voice control, so at the very top next to those preset buttons, you have a bunch of mics, which is used for that voice control. I would say voice control is kind of hit or miss, but we'll get to that later in the, in the video. Um, this is also controlled via USB-C, so it has USB-C, or I should say powered on, not, not controlled, but it's powered on by via USB-C. Now, as soon as I unplug it, it loses power. So I do wish this had an internal battery just because having an extra cable dangling around your car is kind of annoying. Um, so the way, depending on how your car is set up, it might get in the way or it might not. For me, it doesn't necessarily get in the way, but it's just an extra cable that's just dangling around and it doesn't look very nice in my opinion. But I do wish I had an internal battery that way it can keep its charge for like a minimum two to three hours just so that you can get through that car ride and just plug it in once you get out of the car. So I do wish it had that as far as the hardware. But otherwise, I think the hardware design, it's very sleek, it's very slim, it looks really nice. It doesn't take up a lot of room. Um, I think it's nice. Only thing I do wish, again, was that internal battery. I wish it had that. And it also has a magnet on the back here, which is then used to be able to set it up in your car. So basically, you can use an air vent, you can use an adhesive sticky thing, or on your dashboard. I have it on my air vent, just because it's the best place that I found that it doesn't get in the way, while it also looks kind of cool there and it doesn't you know it doesn't retract from its usability it actually kind of sits really nicely between my phone and my bluetooth transmitter but that comes up an issue so going into the whole performance and everyday usage of the actual car thing voice controls so voice controls are kind of hit or miss so my situation is since i'm using off the air vent when i'm using my air whether it be the heat or the cool there's air blowing. And so that hits the mics right at the very top here. So that means it, Spotify, the Spotify car thing will give you a warning saying, hey, we hear and detect a lot of noise from the air. Um, just keep in mind, the voice control might not work properly. And yeah, it doesn't work properly when you when you have the air going, going through. But when I have the air off, even then, I would say voice like recognition and voice like trying to understand what you're saying isn't the greatest 100%. Now this might be tied to Spotify's like software and how they would use it. If it was using Google's um, software and uh, like that, all that stuff, the machine learning, that would, that would probably be even better. It'd probably be working really well. But sometimes it doesn't understand what I'm saying or it misunderstands what I said, like if I asked for a song, 
it won't understand what I said, <clears throat> or it'll, it won't know what the album was. Like sometimes that happens and it can be kind of frustrating and annoying, which then leads you to want to use your phone to just grab it and look for it yourself or browse around on here, which then defeats the purpose of it, which is the purpose is that you don't get distracted and keep your hands on the wheels and keep your eyes on the road. But when that happens, it can be frustrating sometimes. But when it does work, it's fantastic. You know, it's always nice to be able to just say, hey, Spotify, play this song. Or, hey, Spotify, play this album. It's actually very convenient and very nice. Another way it's super convenient is that this is primarily used for Spotify, right? So this controls your music. And it's all Spotify, everything. On your phone, if you're like traveling and you have to use your GPS, you can completely forget about Spotify on your phone and just use this for Spotify and then completely focus on the navigation part on your phone. So you can have like the way I have my phone set up on my car, the math will be just on top and the Spotify car thing is right below it. So I have everything right you know, next to each other vertically, which is great. So if I'm ever using the GPS, I don't have to worry about having to switch between the apps real quick to switch a song or look for a certain song. I just have to use this, which is actually pretty convenient. Um, that's the main reason I feel like they built this and designed this just so that you don't have to feel like you have to use your, your phone for everything because you have an extra like device to be able to back that up for you. Um, that's similar to how like CarPlay and iAndroid Auto works, right? And it's for you to, and the screens on and cars nowadays. It's used so that you don't have to focus on your phone or use your phone for everything, which is what this is designed to do, I'm pretty sure, which is actually, again, pretty convenient. But then browsing around, going through things, it's pretty simple to navigate. Um, I do get confused sometimes when I go into my library. I try to search for like a quick playlist that I know I have made or saved. And it's like all the way at the end, which can be kind of frustrating because I have to keep scrolling and scrolling until I find it. And I do also wish that the way you search, like once you get into a playlist and search for a certain song, I wish it was a little bit like, or I would show more songs because you have to keep scrolling, scrolling until you finally get to the song that you want. Um, just so that it could be easier to quickly navigate to that a song. Um, I thought that would make it a little bit faster. But otherwise, so far the experience has been good. Um, only complaints, like again, it's just the internal battery. I wish I had one. And I also wish the voice, uh, voice recognition and understanding was a little bit better. But otherwise, it's been pretty good as far as that. The display is also pretty usable in any situation, whether it be in the dark, whether it be at, at night. It does dim down a bit. So at night, it doesn't blast you with extreme brightness. It'll dim down and at, 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 during the day. It'll uh, brighten up enough so that if the sun's hitting it directly or if you're in a very uh, sunny day, it'll be more than usable. You can definitely see it and use it visible when you're in the day or at night. So it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. But is it worth it? Is it really worth it? Well, I paid $80 for it. I, I heard that like earlier in the year, they were sending out free units out so people to test it out and play with it. And then that ended. I didn't even know about it. And then they started to send out another email saying, hey, we have it available if you want to purchase it. I was like, fuck it. Let's purchase it. And... No, it is not worth what it costs. It cost $80, $80 for this. I don't know. I think it's pretty expensive for what you're getting. If it was like 50 or $40, I would hundred percent say, yeah, this is actually a pretty cool add on to your car, a pretty cool gadget, but $80, I don't know. I think it's pretty expensive in my opinion. I think you're better off just using your phone at that point. If you really, really need it, 100% would recommend. It's pretty cool. Actually, I want 100% recommend. I would just say it's pretty cool to have. It's an extra add-on. I would definitely say I use it every day when I'm driving and it's definitely usable, but the price tag, it just, I'm not 100% behind the price tag, but I am definitely behind car thing. It's pretty cool, but that's been it. Hope you guys enjoyed. 